I had the honor of living in Palestine uh, for a year and visiting before and after for a little bit, for several months at a time, but like having lived there um, and worked and learned, worked with and learned from the refugees in the camps was some of my greatest growth as just as a person and of course as an intellectual but as a person like and in a refugee camp that I was working at I I was I was there um I wasn't working like to make money I was volunteering and I went to volunteer to work with with little kids um on some art just color with them and, you know, I, I wanted to listen to their Arabic and they could teach me Arabic. Um, and so as I was there in the camp, they found out that I make maps, that I'm a geographer. And immediately they wanted to know, can you can you map the camp? And I was doing this whole research project on how maps have ruined everything. <laughs> on how Palestine, how all of our lands were mapped, like in this property and no, we don't want a map anymore. But they're like, but then they started telling me, no, no, it's like, you don't understand. Israel has the maps of the camps whenever they arrest us, whenever they do one of their raids in the camp. In their GPS, they like to show us that they have a map of the camp and our name is on top of the building that we live in. So Israel has hyper surveillance and it has the maps of the camps. And here are the refugees in the camp were asking me to map. And so, of course, I said yes, and uh, I had to find an, a high-resolution photograph of the camp, um, which, which was not easy, but totally possible, because on Google Earth, the Google Earth ones wouldn't work, because on Google Earth, Israel um, is not high-res. It's like the only place in the world, along with you, other U.S. militaries, that is not high-res. Um, but Israel does take high-res photography and then sells it in, in the market. And so I was able to get one, a copy of this camp, of Ida camp. Um, and so I mapped it, and I mapped it like this. I just mapped the, you know, the buildings, the dark gray is where the camp is. The light gray is not the camp. That black line is the apartheid wall. And if you can see, like, little dots, that's those are sniper towers. And it... It has some greenery, it has some trees. These are olive trees and there's like trees peppered in also throughout the camp. That's something really beautiful. A lot of the, the refugees are farmers and they, they love the land. And so they have little plants as much as they can. And then it, it has this, the, the wall has this really weird uh, shape here because Rachel's tomb is right here. There's a cemetery here in Rachel's tomb. A holy tomb is there. And so they raised this part for tourist buses. So Jerusalem is up here. And then this is Bethlehem. And no one here on this side of the wall can now go onto the other side of the wall. So they can't visit Jerusalem anymore, Palestinians. And so this is all for tourists to come in, park their bus, and then go visit Rachel's tomb. And there's a refugee camp right there, right there, that you cannot miss. And sniper towers. And this is what it looks like from the roof of the camp. You see the olive orchard that was taken. And you also see... The sniper tower, all, all blacked out, fire, and of course graffiti, Guernica. And because I saw a map of <laughs> all of Palestine, it made me think about how, even though this is a colonial map, totally colonial, the shape of Palestine, these borders that, you know, we see in, in the shape in this graffiti. Palestinians, like a lot of movements in resistance, turn this against the colonizer. This is a terrifying map for Zionism, terrifying. It says we will return and then it shows all of Palestine and it's just graffiti. It's not an official anything. And it's far more terrifying than anything that has happened in the so-called peace process negotiation bullshit. This is how Palestinians taught me, along with mapping the Ida refugee camp project, that the map is not inherently good or bad. It's a tool and it depends on how we deploy it. So just how it can be the art of war. It can also be the art of resistance.
and so <laughs> just walking around the camp I decided I wanted to just give tribute pay tribute to all of the maps in the camp on that day that I could find of all of Palestine in the graffiti <laughs> there is not one map of the West Bank and Gaza. In refugee camps, any refugee camp you go to, you're going to see the entire map of Palestine. There's no way you're going to see Gaza and the West Bank like the Palestinian leadership in the negotiations only maps Gaza and the West Bank. The Palestinian refugees are like, hell nah. And this is in a refugee camp that has the names of the villages of everybody from that camp. We will return. <laughs>